In this video, we're going to have a look at how you can build your own post layout. And what I've done is I've created a layout of posts from the same set of posts and then avoided duplication of those posts in the output while keeping it interesting. And the way that I've done that is I've done that using the Bricks Post Query Vars filter. So this now allows me to build a dynamic listing of posts, which is what I've done. And that essentially means that no matter how many posts I add, the layout will allocate the post to the different sections and you'll never see a duplication of the posts. So that will depend on how your posts are set up and a little bit of thought needs to go into how to make that possible. So what I did in this particular example is just looking at what's available. I used the author parameters and there I went with author in or author not in. I also looked at the category parameters, once again looking at category in and category not in. I also looked at the search parameter, which is where you can search your post using a search string. And that essentially is what I used then to include or exclude the post and to ensure that there was no overlap. Before I get into the way that I set up the layer, the um, the snippet or the code or the functions then to make that dynamic layout. I just want to show you what I've done inside Bricks. So here we have a couple of layouts. So the top layout here under posts, we here we went for a grid layout with three columns and we just set the first post width to be full width. So that's using the post element. For the second element on the page, I went with the container and used the query loop there for that query. For the balance of the two in the left-hand column and the right-hand column here, I just went with a standard post element as well. It doesn't matter if you go for the posts element or the container using the query loop, everything works in the same way. The next thing I'd like to show you then is just what I've done in terms of the posts. So when it comes to the actual query, what I did here on the first one is the only setting that I set here was the post per page. And what I also did um, in that case is I also disabled the pagination. In the When it came to the container with the post title, you'll see here that um, using that query loop, I've left it at standard posts and there were no adjustments made there. When we go into the, the section, so in the left-hand column under posts, if we look at that query, you'll see here that there's nothing special done here. And once again, I've just turned off the pagination. And then in the container for the right-hand column, once again, um, here I set the post per page to three. And then I've also disabled the pagination. In terms of layout, you can set the layout any way you want. Here on the right hand side, I went with the list, but then um, listed in a vertical. And for the posts on the left, I went with the list, but then listed horizontally. So um, that's what I've done. And as you can see, all these posts now access the same set of posts. In order to keep them different in each of the sections, what I did here is I based the post output then on a search term. So I had a look for posts that included the terms Vader and loop. Now in your posts, of course, that'll be different. I think I created that in my own function. So if we have a look at, let's make that a little bit bigger. So what I did here is I created an argument with a search term and I said I'm looking for posts with Vader and Luke and then we set the post to get the posts and then for each of the posts we get the ID and then we return those post IDs and because it's being looped I've just made sure that the post IDs returned are in an array and that returns the post IDs and that's all that we need then for the query. Then I was able to use that function the results returned in that function in my query. So here we have the queries then for each section on the website. Now, what's important to match up uh, what you're doing uh, with the post layout is we use this element ID. 
Now, when you apply the filter, you'll see that the filter uh, relies on three sets of data, the query vars, the settings, and the element ID. And what we do is we return the query vars. You'll see at the end of our function here, we return the query vars, and the query vars returned then depend on the element ID. So each element ID is going to return a different set of query vars. In the query vars, you can of course then use your WP query elements from the WP query class, so category in, author not in, post in. So whatever's available on the WP query page, which was this page within WordPress, in the developer section, whatever you can pick up from any one of these sections here, you can then apply inside your um, code in doing it in the following way. So there we have those elements set up. Now, in order to apply your query vars to the specific elements on the page, what I've done is I've accessed this element ID, and the element ID you'll see is this unique ID that we have here for each item. And to get that for each item, there are two ways of doing it. So the first way I'm going to show you is to look inside of Bricks. So here I am inside Bricks. And if we go to, let me just reset the mag, uh, magnification. Um, if we go to the first element on the page, and here we have the post element, you'll see here in the post um, ID there, you'll see we have the BRXE dash. S-E-Y-M-A-Q. Now, that S-E-Y-M-A-Q is the ID, and you, but you can't select it here because it's a unique ID that's allocated, and there's no way to edit it here. If we look at the post container, you'll see that the, um, the same applies. We click on the container in which we have the loop, and you'll see that the last six digits there are the digits that we're after. But once again, if we click on edit, ah, in this case, what I've done is I've pasted it in so that I could copy it. But generally, you'll see that in any of these, if you're in there, you can't edit that element. So if you want to be able to edit that element or you want to um, get the element, it's quite easy. It's just six letters. Alternatively, if you go to the website, you can get it from the content. So if we inspect that element at the top, so this is the element that we're looking at and just got to be careful because we're not looking for the section element or the div wrapper we're actually looking for the id just before you see the um, posts listed now in this case you'll see that because it's a post element it does also have this data script id with the id listed separately so then it's a case of just copying that ID from there and heading over and then using that particular element, oops, that particular element in your code. If you're using the uh, container element and you want to get the ID, it's a little bit different because it doesn't have that separate ID label that you have with the um the normal post element. So there you had that data script ID and the ID. Here, of course, you don't have that, but the last six digits here of the ID in which you have your um, the post query, that's the ID that you're looking for. So not the section ID, not any other container ID, but the one just before the output of the um, code. In the case of the container, you'll see that each element will have the same ID and of course you will then be able to get that code. So that's how we pick it up there. And then of course here these are post elements. So what we'll do is go into the post element and then we'll pick it up again here because there you'll see the data script ID and that'll be the code that we use. So CTA MPU and if I go over you'll say there I have the CTA MPU. So then it's just a case of some if statements. If the element ID is the same as and that unique value, then run the following query. And that's what we've done for each of these. Now, in order to get each element unique, what I've done is I've based a lot of it on the, the categories and then also the post. 
um, and the author. So using those three, I was able to set up separate post listings. And the reason for that is because I have two authors on the website. So if I was to say show posts, in this case, I've said look for all the posts in these two categories where the author number two is not in. So any of the posts, um, look, look in these categories for posts that do not have this author and look for posts that are also in the search query that we created here. So if the post contains the terms Veda and Luke with not written by author number two and is only in categories 34 and 37, um, then I put those posts. So when you have a look at the listing here, you'll see that these are the posts. Now, I know that it's category six and category three. So they have to match up with category six or category three. And none of these must be written by author number two. And I would know if it was author number two because I added a prefix to author number two posts so that I can see if it was author number two. That's then pretty much how I set the first section up. So um, you can now see that what I did, and I'll quickly just show you now this left-hand column. What I did in the left-hand column here is I said only display post by author number two. So if you scroll down here, and what I've done is I've arranged the IDs of those elements. So that's the top element, the second element, the left-hand column, and then the right-hand column. So in that left-hand column, what I said is, in this case, um, make sure that the posts are by author number two. And the posts are in, and once again, we've used the search term. So I said the posts are in the search term here and in the search term here. But the big difference here is that I've said only display posts by author number two. And here I've said display the posts that aren't by author number two. Also in this section over here, I didn't restrict it by category. So here I've said they can belong to any category um, as long as they're authored by author number two and they contain the search terms Vader and Luke. In the section then on the far right hand side, I did something a little bit different here. So here I said, right, they must not be in categories 34 or 37. They must not be written by author number two, and they must not be in the search. So this is pretty much the opposite of everything else that I've done previously on the page. The last element on the page was this particular element over here. And in this case, I identified a single post and just said, okay, show a post by a specific ID. Now, that could lead to some duplication in the future because in this case, I've specified a single post. Um, on the other hand, what I could do, because it's a unique post, you might want to create a separate category then that might uh, only be used then for that post. And then the latest post in that category is displayed here all the time. So um, really up to you how you want to build out your your post but the nice thing now is that because you have all of it on the same page it's very quick and easy then to um, determine which categories to use and which categories not to use you can achieve the same results agreed using or some of the same results you can achieve that here so for example um, if I go into the query here I can say ex uh, terms to exclude so I can select the terms and here I have uh, the terms to include and the terms to exclude. The problem though is that you've got to keep flipping between the different sections to see what you're doing and that can get a bit confusing and after a while you might lose track of what's what. What's nice here about the snippet is that I can immediately see what I have available and I can then immediately see, okay, so there we focused on 34 and 37. Those are categories in. Here we want to do um, categories 
these, these are categories not in, these are categories in. So it's much quicker to work out exactly what your post is and then by what your page will look like. And then if you arrange them in a logical sequence, as per your page layout, you can actually do quite a bit here without having to refer back to the page. So just to show you how this would work then, if in the top section here, I was to comp comment out author not in and save the changes and I head over to the website and I refresh, then you'll see that there may well be some author two posts included now in the top, which is what we have. So here I would have author two here and I also have author two here. So very quickly then I can come in and just say write exclude author two from the uh, top section of posts. The other nice thing about doing it this way is that once you have set up your, your settings and you see a duplication, it's then quite um, easy for you to see how you're going to separate out the posts, come into your, your code and then separate out the posts in the way that you would like to separate them out. So that's pretty much then how you can use the BRICS query vars filter to create um, different um, layouts for posts and then you can of course do it any way that you want. In this case I went on a search term. What's nice about that is in the traditional way you would normally have posts from category one, two, three, four separated out all by author. Here by using a search term I can create a, a more flexible layout and of course I could create more than one function with different search terms. So that's then just a brief overview of how you can use the vars query or query vars to create interesting layouts. Um, so I hope you enjoyed that video. Thank you for watching.